Hey, good morning. Let's go over today's trade plan. So in the overnight session, we saw that the push back up towards the 19 and 20 area attracted responsive sellers, which led to a new swing low into the 90.75 to 93 quarter support where responsive buyers have been active. So as covered in Friday's recap video, as the market is pushing into stronger areas of support, it is continuing to attract responsive buyers. And that's the theme that we've seen over the last couple of days as well. So at this point, heading into the open, uh, we do have to be a little bit more cautious on the short side. If ES can start trading back above 01 quarter and 02 quarter, the previous close and previous VPOC, uh, then it could attract even more buying and start uh, putting in a short term reversal off of a temporarily oversold condition. So off the open, we're going to be watching how the market reacts to this 2000 level 01 quarter, 02 quarter, and um, that'll help set the tone for the day. On the downside, 90.75 to 93 quarter is going to be initial support, and uh, that is still an area where the buyers can defend. Uh, we know that the larger time frame bias is bearish, but with the understanding that the market is now testing larger time frame support, which uh, can attract uh, larger time frame buyers as well. And that can result in a short term reversal back up. So our bias heading into the day is going to be fairly neutral uh, because of the limited downside potential unless we start seeing just extreme weakness again and sustained downside momentum. So 90.75 to 93 quarter is the first area of support. If we break below that, then we can go down into the uh, lower support zones at 81.75 to 83.75. We have a naked V pocket 80 quarter. And again, as you push into the support areas below, responsive buyers can jump in. And as the market gets oversold into those areas, it can actually produce a pretty decent bounce, especially if uh, we get some better selling into the open gap at 76 quarter, the 77 quarter support level, and uh, the 72 quarter 75 support. So as you push into that larger time frame support, you can get um, a pretty uh, decent buy response and a reversal. And uh, if we actually just uh, continue to hold initial support and then break out above the 2000 or the 04 quarter, 06 quarter, then we can get some acceleration to the upside. Right now, the market is simply consolidating within a range and it can really tip either way. Uh, so the question now heading into the open is going to be whether the uh, 90.75 to 93 quarter support uh, is actually marking the end of a short term downswing or whether we're going to continue to balance below 2000 and then actually extend the range one more time before putting in a short term reversal. But uh, either way, at this point, we have to be a little bit more cautious on the short side and uh, not be overly bearish simply because of the recent weakness in the market because the market has hit a pretty decent downside objective here at 90.75 to 93 quarter and uh, if we start getting that reversal back up off that zone then on the upside we could actually retrace uh, quite easily back up to the 14.75 to 16.75 area and the 19 half to 22 half now on the upside, the 19 half to 22 half is a resistance zone where the sell side can be active. Uh, we can see the market actually get capped a bit up there. And uh, especially if the market moves back into the 25 half to 26 half or 28 half to 31, you know, those are still high probability areas for the sell side to be active. Um, because even as we move back up, it's simply resolving that oversold condition off of a major support area. It doesn't necessarily change the entire uh, downtrend that has been in play. You know, it's simply a bounce and uh, then the market can establish another range, another balance area as we head into the uh, primary catalyst for the week into Wednesday, into the uh, Fed decision. So right now, that's really the way the market is set up. More likely to balance in a range and um, limited downside potential. So we just have to be aware 
of trade location if we are shorting this market and again not get overly bearish uh, simply because of the recent weakness uh, understand that initial support could mark the end of a short-term downswing uh, keep an eye on the market internals in real time to determine whether there is really sufficient weakness now to justify another swing lower uh, because you are going to have to see some excessive weakness for the market to actually continue going down um, you know if the AD is a little bit negative let's say the advanced decline is minus 500 or even minus a thousand you know that is still indicative of a balanced market and not a uh, liquidation type market so today could be a consolidation type day we've already sold off quite a bit over the last couple of sessions and uh, again for that reason we just have to be very aware of trade location on the short side and um, at the same time we still have to be aware of location on the long side too because the market is more likely to uh, trade within a range so be selective um, you know we're heading into the end of year uh, it still makes sense to be uh, even more selective here and cut down a bit on the risk so uh, be selective on the trades that are taken uh, given the volatility and the volume in the market you know you only need a couple of good trades in a market like this to uh, perform quite well so uh, just be fairly selective on the trade setups be just aware of the trade location uh, and um, aside from that just keep an eye on the real-time market conditions to see whether uh, you know it's really in alignment with today's trade plan and supporting the idea of more of a balanced market and balancing within the recent range so those are the main thoughts heading into the open uh, let's see if the uh, buy side can actually maintain the short-term strength that we're seeing in the market and we'll take it from there